In the previous movie, we assigned some UV coordinates to certain objects that are going to need textures or decals. For example, these buttons. If I select one of those buttons and go over to the Modify panel, we'll see it has a UVW map modifier applied. Our next step is to save out a UV template image so that we can use that as a guide to create the graphics of these button and screen labels. So that's done using the Unwrap UVW modifier. So we want to once again select all the objects that we wish to map. And we didn't create a selection set in the previous movie. We probably should have done that to make it a little bit easier, but let's go through the motions once again. I'll open up the Layer Explorer and open up the Radio Layer. We want to select the Display LCD object because it's hiding behind the glass and kind of hard to select. And then we want to select the other buttons, logos, and elements that need to be mapped. Hold down Control and select the buttons. Select this logo. Just select all those objects once again as we did before. There's going to be 22 of them, including all these buttons and this model number object down here. I've got 22 objects selected, and this time I'm actually going to create a selection set. I'll call it Textured Objects. And now let's add a new modifier to those selected objects, which is Unwrap UVW. Once that's assigned, we can go into the Edit UVs rollout and click Open UV Editor. And what we see is a layout of the UVs for all the selected objects. The frame here represents the mapping space, the 0 to 1 space, that corresponds to our UVW map gizmo. We want to save this image out to a template so that then we can use that to create the graphics that will be applied onto all these surfaces. To save out that UV template, go into the Edit UVW's menu, choose Tools, Render UVW Template. And in this little pop-up dialog, we can do a test. Let's click on Render UV Template at the bottom. So here's what we get by default. We've got a width and height of 1024 by 1024. Well, that's fine in a lot of cases. In this case, however, because I want to be using vector art, that adds a little bit more complexity to this. Basically, vector programs work with pixels per inch, and I need to know how many pixels to plug in to the width and height here to correspond to a particular real-world scale. In this case, a 10 centimeter square, which represents the total area here. All right, so I'll close this window. To calculate the pixel values, we can use a handy tool. It's called the Print Size Assistant. We can go into Rendering, Print Size Assistant. And within here, we're working in millimeters or metric, so let's choose millimeters. The size of our canvas, which is the UVW map, is 10 centimeters, so we'll put in a paper width of 100 millimeters, a paper height of 100 millimeters, and we see now at a pixels per inch or DPI of 300, we would have a pixel value of 1181 for the width and height. Well, that's not really going to be good enough to resolve the lines in the UVW template with much accuracy. So I'm going to increase this up to 600 pixels per inch. And that means we're going to have a corresponding pixel width and height of 2362. So that's what I'm actually going to plug in to the Render UVs dialog. We can close the print size wizard, give this a width here of 2362. Press tab and enter that in the height as well, 2362. Now we've got the correct size. That's going to correspond to a 10 centimeter square at 600 pixels per inch. If we click Render UV Template once again, we'll see it's kind of hard to see because it's aliased, but we can zoom in there. That's done by holding down the Control key and then clicking. So now we're seeing this at a 1 to 2 size. Basically, I want this to be a little bit easier to see by adding a fill in these areas where the buttons and screen elements are present, and also by eliminating the alpha channel, because if we display the alpha channel here, we see that the area outside of those edges is actually transparent. That's actually going to make it harder for us 
in an illustration program. So I'll click on the alpha channel display and go back to an RGB display. In the render UVs dialog over here, let's make some changes. We'll change the fill mode to solid. Click render UV template and we get another window here. And now we see we're getting a solid fill in the area of each object. But we're also getting this red highlighting and that's because these objects are 3D and the back side of those objects are being mapped and that's causing overlapping UVs. Well, we don't care about that because we'll never see the backs of these objects anyway. So just to remove that distraction, we can turn off show overlap and render again. We're getting closer here. We're almost there. We also just want to get rid of these green edges. If I control click here and zoom in a couple times, those are the seam edges. That's just going to be more confusing. So I can turn that off as well. And now we're finally ready to render our template with the settings that we wanted. Click render UV template. And this does have an alpha channel once again, but we can save this out with the alpha channel disabled. So click to save the image. Click on the little floppy disk icon. Now we want to save into some working folder, probably not into the scene assets images. And the reason is that I like to keep scene assets images only for textures that are used in the scene. But this is going to be a template for creating a texture to be used in the scene. So I'm going to go up a couple levels here and we can go into scene assets. And instead of saving into the images folder, we can create a new folder in here and we can call that working. Go into that folder and then save the file name. We'll call it UV template. And the type we'll choose PNG or portable network graphics. Go into the setup. You might need to click the setup button twice. And we want 24 bits with no alpha. Click OK and click Save. Now that's been saved and we can check that. We can go to the file menu and choose view image file. And here's our file UV template.png. Open that up and we can see that it has no alpha. If we choose the alpha channel, it's totally opaque. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now that's suitable for using in another program such as Photoshop or Illustrator in order to create all the graphics that we need. That process is really out of scope for this tutorial. We're only dealing with what we can do in 3ds Max. But your basic process is you're going to bring that UV template into an image editor such as Photoshop in order to create the button and screen graphics based upon the template. If you do work in a resolution independent program, which deals with vector images, such as Illustrator, you'll want to interpret this PNG file as having a pixels per inch of 600, and you don't want to resample the pixels. Okay, so once again, we're not going to go through that whole process in Photoshop and Illustrator or any other image editing program. We're just going to skip forward to the stage at which that image has been already created. But that's how to save out a UV template in preparation for creating texture maps.